Uh, joining us now is Dr. Paul Kengor, editor of the American Spectator magazine and political science professor at Grove City College in Pennsylvania. Dr. Kengor, always great to see you. Uh, let's talk more about this first GOP primary debate. As mentioned, former President Trump will not be taking part. Now, historically, has something like this happened before with a candidate who has such a strong lead? And do you think this will help or hurt Trump? That's a good question, Tracy. It's I don't know if it's historically unprecedented, but I can't remember the last time. And to have somebody that far ahead, I mean, he's probably 40 points, I think, in some polls over the number two, which would be Ron DeSantis and maybe even Ramaswamy. I think those are really the top three. So to have him <laughs> not there, I mean, the elephant in the living room is not going to be in the living room. So it's really kind of strange. I think it's to Trump's disadvantage that he's not there because it's going to allow all of the other eight. And there's a lot of prominent people coming in from all over the country, flying into Milwaukee to be there. Um, it's going to elevate all of them. But at the same time, you know, Trump is up by 40 points without debating. So in a way, why should he debate? It's almost like Joe Biden campaigning in 2020 out of his basement and, and not even doing any rallies and end up, ending up winning. So I can understand why he's not there. But at the same time, I, I think it's I think it will hurt him more than help him not to be there. Yeah. And Palm Carries, what are you expecting or what do you want to hear from the candidates, in particular, those Catholic candidates such as former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis? Yeah, and I believe those are the only two Catholics. It's um, two out of eight. And I guess the North Dakota governor, I think he might not be there. I guess he's an injured reserve, right? Sounds like the poor guy um, might have might have got hurt playing uh, basketball or something today. So that might take us down to seven. The I, I expect DeSantis to be really good, really strong on the cultural issues. He's he's been very good on abortion. He's been really good on, on you know, what Pope Francis calls gender ideology. Uh, he he was accused by the New York Times yesterday or the day before of of being this culture war governor. I think DeSantis would probably say, well, you know, you've sort of brought the culture war to me. <laughs> it's kind of typical of the of, of these folks who start a culture war, push cultural issues. Uh, President Joe Biden certainly has been pushing these cultural things. And then when somebody like Governor Ron DeSantis merely tries to respond to it, he's accused of engaging in the culture war. So I expect him to be strong on that. I also expect, Tracy, a good night from uh, Tim Scott. I think Tim Scott is really good, very polished. I think he's going to stand out tonight. I think he's going to impress people. Nikki Haley is always good. And um, Ramaswamy, I think, will do a good job. He is um, he's very sharp. He's very polished. He's an attractive candidate. And I expect him to do well also tonight. Yeah, Paul, and you are in Pennsylvania, which is a swing state. And so is Wisconsin, where this debate is being held tonight. You know, I'm curious, um, how important is it for the candidates to, to connect with voters in these states? And what are the middle ground issues for both parties, uh, Republicans and Democrats? Yeah, it's really vital, Tracy. I mean, looking at the last two elections, 20, 2020 and 2016, I mean, these were really won in the Electoral College. And so in the end, it's going to come down to swing states like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Ohio, uh, you know, Florida, Arizona, you know, New Mexico, just a handful of others. And I mean, that's how that's how Donald Trump won in 2016. I mean, he lost to Hillary Clinton by two to three million popular votes. I think overall his voting percentage was about 46 percent. And in uh, 2020 against Biden, he only got about 46 percent as well, but still was competitive because he did so well in the Electoral College. So for this first debate to be in Wisconsin, I think is is a crucial move by the GOP, by the Republicans. And from here on out, expect the candidates to be um, campaigning in not just states like Wisconsin, but indeed my home state of Pennsylvania. They'll be all over the home, my home state of Pennsylvania for the over the next 12 months or so. Yeah, my home state, too, as you know. Paul, before right, we wrap right. up, a uh, little less than a minute left or so. What do these candidates need to do? What do you think they need to prove tonight? Well, I think they all need to prove that um, they're capable of governing. I think that's a good part of it. And that's an advantage of someone like Governor DeSantis and Nikki Haley and even Chris Christie, because you have people there who have actually been governors. And that's to the detriment of Ramaswamy, who's going to be accused of being somebody who you know, has never held office before. But then again, Tracy, right, in the past, whereas that might have been a negative for a candidate, Look at Donald Trump. Donald Trump was elected without ever having held office. And, and prior to him, Barack Obama 
had been uh, you know, barely in the U.S. Senate for a few years, and he got elected. So you know, nowadays, you know, not having governing experience is seen by a lot of people as an asset. But at the same time, I think you need to be able to prove to people, like in the case of someone like uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, that um, that you could actually you could actually govern and not just you know, look good on TV. Yeah, we're gonna leave it right there, Dr. Kangor. Always so great to see you and get your insights. We appreciate it. Well, thanks, Tracy. Always good to be on with you.